Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am your host, Courtney Anderson. Today we have a show that is one of the Myth Warriors series shows. And of course, as Myth Warriors, that means that you and I don all of our offensive gear, weaponry, and our defensive material protection garments. And we go into the world and we attack. We attack concepts, ideas, to try to determine are these myths, right? Are they lies, fallacies, falsehoods, or are they potentially credible? Something that we should believe it potentially and make decision based on it might actually be actionable data. As always, I do encourage you to come to CourtneyAnderson.com to share any feedback, questions, concerns, show ideas. And our specific show today is going to introduce the idea and, in fact, the burgeoning area of pull chronomics. Pull chronomics. How many of you have heard of that? Pool chronomics is the economic study of beauty. And our topic for today's episode is attractive people make more money than unattractive people. Attractive people make more money than unattractive people. Is that a, is that a myth? Is it is it actual data that's verified, that's credible? We don't know yet, but we do know that just this idea does bring us into the area of pull chronomics, which is the economic study of the beauty or attractiveness. And putting together the research for this show was just fascinating. I, I've shared in so many other programs that one of the reasons I get so excited and happy uh, about this work and, and so much of my other work is because I really love it and I love learning new things. And with this program and, and the research and everything, I feel like I've learned a lot, a lot of new things. So I wasn't uh, totally up to speed, but there uh, is the father of pole chronomics, uh, who is actually a, a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, which is as I've shared on many occasions, I'm a proud um, uh, alumni. Uh, I have my undergraduate degree and my law degree from University of Texas at Austin and also used to teach there. So I love every time I see uh, someone from my institution um, out there in the world and, 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 and demonstrating the wonderful value and exceptional uh, research and scholarship of the institution. So there's a plug, right? Go Longhorns. All right, so um, Daniel Hammermesh is the acknowledged father of pole chronomics, or at least he is alleged to be, uh, according to uh, some of the research resources. So if you look in the show notes, you'll see the Smithsonian Magazine, which is, which is where I, I'm, I'm getting this uh, um, wonderful uh, attribution uh, to Professor Hammermesh. And the question is, is it a myth? that attractive people make more money than unattractive people. Again, we know that the way that we try to figure out if something's a myth or if it might be actual, uh, a credible, something that might be true, potentially, is to look and see, okay, well, what's the data? What's the research? Who conducted the research? What, what, what can we find to support that this is, that this is might, might be true or accurate or valid? Um, and if we can't find anything, it starts to help us lead to the conclusion that either we have insufficient information right now to, to make a complete determination, but we are going to be very cautious. That's, it might might have a higher probability that something is a myth if we don't see anything to try to support it being verified, right? So I'm doing all the research. I'm looking into this idea, and I want to just take a, a, a moment or so to, to acknowledge something incredibly important about this area. And the area, of course, is the idea of, of attractiveness. For some people, it can trigger a negative consequence just to start even talking about or thinking about this idea of being attractive. And, and so many of the other programs that we have, and, of course, my, my um, speaking engagements, and corporate education programs, I have strongly suggested 
as we work to surpass our goals, that we are our own, our own number one fan. And with that, and 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 what I what I'm arguing is that we should be our own supporter. We should be someone who believes in 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 the 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 positive attributes. We should be someone who encourages and motivates and supports uh, ourselves. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, and and one of the reasons that I spend so much time on that is because we know and we. have than other programs on, you know, in a, and if you, in a battle or a fight or a war against yourself, you're going to lose. It, it makes logical sense, partially because um, you're with yourself all the time, right? And if you turn against yourself and you start spending your, your, your waking conscious time belittling and berating and criticizing and diminishing and being negative about yourself, there's no way to escape it. That's why it's that's why it's 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 one of the main reasons why it's such a, a, a negative decision and choice because they give you awful outcomes. Everybody I've ever encountered who invests their time and resources in battling themselves has negative consequences from it. How can you not? Right? Just imagine. It's like you know carrying around a tape recorder uh, of um, that my age or a voice memo where you just keep replaying over and over again, somebody yelling at you and calling you bad names and telling you that you're, you know, you're too small, you're too large, you're, you're, your hair is horrible, your clothes are horrible, your skin is horrible, your teeth are horrible, your eyes are horrible, you know, whatever it is. People do it, though. It doesn't make any logical sense at all. It's, it's, it's illogical that someone would do this, but people do it, which is why we spend so much time on it in, in these different programs. And I'm acknowledging right now that if it triggers, if this topic triggers for you some sort of potential negative um, experience, then, 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 then put this away and then come back later when, you, when you're in a healthier place. Um, it has to start and begin with you being kind to yourself. Kind to yourself is the first part of it. Um, and then as you mature through development, hopefully there's a point where you're, you are. You love yourself. You support yourself. You're your fan. You're your motivator. You're your encourager. You're, the, you're, you're there for you. And, and, and that gives you so much. Uh, it gives you just a reservoir of, of strength and power and energy to draw from. And it also takes away from <laughs> any of this time-wasting um, criticism where you, you know, attack yourself. So, but this is a real challenge for people. When you start talking about attractiveness, then immediately for many people, they just get very negative and start thinking, oh, well, they're not talking about me. I'm not attractive. I don't even want to know if people make more money because they're attractive, because I'm not attractive. I wish I was taller. I wish I was smaller. I wish I was, I wish I was, um, you know, different hair, I wish I had a different nose, I wish I had different eyes, I wish I had different skin. I mean, it just never stops. And the time and the money that people put in is self-attacking, right? Not just the, the, the actual assaults where you yell and scream at yourself and say bad things to yourself, but people will literally go out and try to, I guess they think they're trying to change themselves physically to, I guess, I'm not guessing, but from what I've read, the, the analysis is that someone thinks that they're not what they what they wish they were. So then they try to make themselves that. So they chemically change their hair, or they or they um, put on um, someone else's hair. They change. They literally will get um, plastic surgery. In some parts of the world, it's incredibly common, and people will be insulted if they have their natural nose, or their natural eyes, or their natural chin, or whatever. I'm not really sure that anesthesia and um, risking infection, maybe even death, is necessarily the best choice. And who who told someone that their nose and their eyes and their chin and their is some it's not quote right? It's not good enough. It's not attractive. Who decides this? Which brings me to this: all of these um, issues are. Or challenging, which is one of the reasons why it's a relatively new area of research, right? I, I've, I talked a, a little bit ago and gave um, some acknowledgement to the, you know, the father of this area, studying the, the economics of beauty, uh, which is very recent. I mean, very recent, right? And part of it is because it's, 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 it's difficult to define what is attractive, 
what is unattractive? Any 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 example that you would share with me? And I've this has happened in so many, especially uh, speaking events, where we're talking about sets of issues, um, and at a conference and and confidence and and personal power and and someone will you know and I'll make a point. Look, it's all subjective, right? You 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 give me an example, and I can of someone that you think is just the the epitome of sheer physical perfection, and they're the most you know handsome man, they're the most gorgeous woman. That's what you think, and I can guarantee you that I can find people who will tell you honestly and authentically they don't see it at all. They don't see that they're attractive at all. Not attractive to them. Um, and a lot, and so much of this is cultural. So depending on where we're from and the and the, and the cultural value, some cultures value very small framed people. So then people in those cultures often will do everything they can to make themselves as small as possible. Sometimes they'll abuse their, their health and uh, not getting enough nutrition because they're just obsessed with being as small. In other cultures, it's 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 the opposite. You you must be large. Large large uh, framed uh, people show that they have the wealth to have excess calories and excess food. And so everyone runs around abusing their body. Um, I saw a fascinating um, um investigative journalist piece about this relatively recently a few months ago um, a journalist from Canada had gone uh, to one of, uh, a part of the world where there was the culture where people the the woman um, in, in this culture the woman had to be as voluptuous and large as possible because it showed she had again I guess access to wealth and she was sort of a Rubenesque, which historically this is what's happened in, in all cultures, and, and, and you can see it through time, right? At, at many times in, in, in history, you look at art, and you'll see that the, the wealthy and, and the in the in the vision of, of a beautiful, you know, woman, the, the Venus is very full figured. Well, that's because only people that were, you know, very 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 small and had very small frames. Um, were, were, were poor people, which makes sense, right? Um, you don't have the ability to have excess uh, calories and, and to and to sort of um, spend your time not out maybe farming or doing other you know strenuous physical work. So you do have the ability then to to have a, and maintain a more um, full uh, shapely figure. And so over time, depending on where you live, you know it's it's all it's all subjective. So you can pick up some person from the culture that's like, oh my gosh, I have to be as small as possible. Um, and then take them another culture where they need to be large, and and then they'll just if they don't have that that healthy um, sense of self, if they are if they're not making good choices, and they're just running around following what everyone else is doing, then they'll just abuse their body the other way, which is what I'd seen in this investigative journalist piece. The other person went to the part of the world right now, modern time, um, went from a part of the world, North America, where it, it's not as um, socially required for someone to be very large and went to a part of the world where right now it is. And people took young girls um, and they force-fed them massive amounts of calories, right, to make sure that they were larger because otherwise who, who won't, you're not beautiful, you're not attractive. And it was and, and people were physically, you know, sick, sickened by this, which makes sense. Anytime you abuse your body with your intake of your, of your, of your food, um, whether it's not enough or it's too much, you're you're hurting yourself. And people do this. Destructive, 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 destructive. And it all comes down to how subjective this is. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> and uh, that that has validity. There's not someone that we could all on the entire planet point to and say that's the most fabulously gorgeous person. Now there are people who maybe are famous or in, in entertainment vehicles or um, that people know around the world, or many people know, whom people might say, oh, they're famous, but not everybody's going to agree that, you know, Marilyn Monroe's the most beautiful woman ever. Other, some people would say, I don't get it at all. But some other people would say, oh, that's everything. I, I want to look like her and get plastic surgery to be like her. Someone else might say, I don't, I don't get it at all. Um, and, it, and that's the same for every single person you name. Every person you name. So, Part of this is that I'm arguing that you're not going to ever take any information in a negative way and, and turn it against yourself. I'm also arguing that attractive is purely subjective. Now, there's some research that shows that people with more symmetrical features, the, the symmetry, just literally the physicality and the symmet symmetry of your, of your facial features impacts people's perception of whether or not you're, quote, attractive. Yeah, okay. I'm not saying that that's not um, valid information, but I am saying that there are many people um, who are just as attractive and and um, and don't have symmetrical features. 
the weird thing is that it's it's subjective. So it's subjective externally, right? By your cultural, your normal, your values. Again, whether your value like small or large or or light uh, tone or dark tone or whatever. People do all these all types of things. Some people bleach their skin. Some people go out and actually um, do the opposite and, and darken their skin, whether in the sun or in artificial uh, tanning. Um, all, both, <laughs> again, what just like the 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 size issue can be abusive, right? We don't bleaching ourselves, trying to make ourselves lighter and 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 darkening ourselves or make ourselves darker. I mean, again, cultural, subjective. The issue is you. So, and trying to figure out if this is a myth. Uh, in the show notes, I've I've gotten a couple of different uh, sources I, for, that I looked at and, and putting together some of my research, and I encourage you to read them. Now, let's get to the to the issue. Some of the sources uh, make the argument that yes, attractive people make more money. Absolutely, positively. Um, the CNN source that I have says that attractive people earn about five percent more in hourly pay than their average-looking colleagues, who in turn earn nine percent more per hour than the plainest looking workers. So the CNN piece is arguing that the plainest working, looking, plainest looking, or um, um, least attractive, okay, are making 9% less than the average looking. And then the average looking are making 5% less than the most attractive. Again, it's all subjective in what, what category you're in. And I know people will say to me, but that's not true at all. And they'll name some model or some entertainer usually, well, which makes sense because those are the people that you that widely are disseminated in society that we we would recognize potentially their name because they're they're hired for their their height um, in many parts of the world right now. Men and women who are very very tall have part of the job uh, qualifications to be models. Um, people who are you know five two in many parts of the world, men and women were not uh, are not um, named. Um, able to be like fashion or runway models. Uh, I'm 5'3 uh, and a half. Okay, maybe just the 5'3. I'm not sure about the half, but I, I've been believing that all these years. Uh, the point is that when you start getting into these discussions of who's the plainest looking or the average looking or the most attractive, then it depends on who you ask. My point is that the first person that you need to ask is the person when you're that you are with all the time. That the person, the person in my argument is should be your number one fan, your lifelong devoted, <laughs> most ardent supporter. Uh, the person who who tells you when you're making um, not not good choices, right? Because they're your friend. Because they, you know, so a friend cares about you. They don't just sit around and let you self destruct. A friend is gonna. May help you make good choices or not going to enable you to do, to do destructive things. And you, as your own friend, aren't going to allow yourself to do destructive things. So getting into these, these vicious uh, issues of, oh, how attractive am I? Am I super attractive? Am I kind of average attractive? Am I, am I, am I plain looking? Um, and a few years ago, uh, they had some mass media shows, and they, I'm sure they'll have them again, um, you know, where people go and put themselves in, in the public spotlight and then they ask other people, you know, how, how attractive am I? Am, am I hot or not, right? Am I pretty? Am I handsome? Am I ugly? Um, I find all this behavior to be incredibly destructive, again, because the people who ask those questions, the fact that you'd ask that question shows me my interpretation that you have issues with your own self-image. I personally have never asked anybody, am I attractive or ugly? A, because I don't care what they think. And B, what does it matter what they think? Now I ask myself, am I making healthy choices? Uh, we all know people that make not healthy choices, and of course that impacts the way that we're perceived physically in the world. Our, 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 I'll use the word our corporate branding. What do I mean by that? Okay. If I'm someone and I'm, in a, I'm not making healthy choices and I'm not taking care of my hygiene, right? So I'm not um, clean. I'm not wearing clean clothes. I'm wearing um, soiled clothes or that or, and that 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 smell. Um, I'm not again uh, um, whatever hair I may have. I'm not. It's not clean. Um, my teeth aren't. I'm not washing my face or washing myself and, and and keeping my teeth clean. These things will impact how people perceive us because. Um, 
whatever the cultural norm is, whatever the expectation is, and of course clean is also subjective. So people from certain cultures have very different expectations for what clean is for some people from other um, cultures. But we all have some expectation, right? And we should invest in, again, eating healthy, taking care of our, 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 our medical and physical issues, um, so that we're not abusing ourselves with food, we're not abusing ourselves with other um, substances, we're not abusing ourselves with stress, and we should make sure that we're clean, that we're sleeping, um, just healthy choices. Now, I can put on, a, you know, a clean outfit, have a wonderful uh, hygiene and, and nice soap and smell my best and go out in the world in my cleanest, nicest outfit, and still I'm going to be 5'3", and I'm still going to look like me. Now, I guess it's possible if I was totally committed to destroying my physical self to change my skin or try to, I guess. I'm not really sure how that works. Um, I could try to, when you go for the surgery, they 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 can do all kinds of things, right? They can cut off, I'm not using the right terminology, but I, I could get a, a new nose, I could get new eyes, I could get a new chin, I could get new cheeks, I can get a whole, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm not thinking it's going to turn me into Marilyn Monroe or um, whatever model is important or well-known now. I just don't think it will. I also don't know if that's the best use of my time and resources. And I also think that every time I am negative about me, right, my face, my clothes, my height, my size, my ears. I mean, my I've heard people – talk it's just literally everything i've heard people you know oh my toes are not what they should be or you know really you're just going to beat yourself up over just anything you can right i've heard people oh my belly button oh i wish my ears oh really wow i don't it it, it it's painful for me because every time we have this destruction, this abuse. It, it hurts. It hurts me if somebody else would come and, and, and say to someone, oh, you're you're ugly, you're not good enough. It hurts me if someone else would say it to themselves. It's just cruel. And what's the point of this? What's the standard? Remember, the standards change, right, culturally. They also change over time. So, you know, 20 years ago when I was younger, the standards of, and the people that were in the public eye were different people, obviously. Some of the same people still in the public eye. But then people even change how they relate to the same person and say, well, why are they wearing that now? You know, they're a different age. It's a different time. Well, they're them. Maybe they like wearing that. They wore it 20 years ago, right? The same type of outfits they like to wear now. What's wrong with that? Who are you to tell them? It's this constant, it's constant violence against people. So, one of the resources, um, in fact, every resource that I provide in the show notes is going to tell you, many of them quoting the same um, scholar, New York at Austin, who's the father of this area, that, yeah, oh, yeah, average-looking people make less money, better-looking people make the most, and homely or unattractive or ugly or grotesque people make the least. They're going to say that. Uh, some of the research says that, um, and I will read this. This is uh, from... WebMD. It says that uh, physical attractiveness had a significant impact, not only on how much people got paid, but how educated they were and how they value, evaluated themselves. Physical attractiveness had a significant impact, not only on how much people got paid, okay, which is the first part of what we're trying to figure out. Is it a myth that people, attractive people get paid more? But it also goes on to say about how educated they were and how they evaluated themselves. The bottom line People who were rated as good-looking made more money, were better educated, and were more confident. But a person's intelligence affected their income more than their looks did. A person's intelligence affected their income more than their looks did. And it says, the effects of self-concept, right, that's me my, being my number one fan or my number one enemy, are particularly noteworthy. Its effects on income are stronger than those of attractiveness and nearly as strong as those of intelligence. 
The influence of core self-evaluations on both income and financial strain underlines the critical role it can play in both objective and subjective life success, the researchers say. What's that all say? Basically, they're saying that, that the research says that whoever the consensus was was attractive, which, of course, is totally debatable, did make more money than the people who the consensus was were not attractive. Yet, the people who were intelligent made more money than any of the physical impact. The intelligence affected income more than looks. Okay. And then it went on to say that the self-concept, right, that, the, that you're, you, you feel good about yourself, Here's the quote. This is from uh, Timothy Judge, a management professor at the University of Florida. said, we found that even accounting for intelligence, right, a person's feeling of self-worth is enhanced by how attractive they are, and this in turn results in higher pay. Interesting. My feeling of self-worth, my effect of my self-concept, That the idea is that the people who have this self-worth and self-concept, then I feel better about myself, and then I go out and get more education or skill development, and then I make more money. And any of the things that we're asking, attractiveness, right, um, intelligence, how it's defined, who defines it, is everything. The again, the 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 the, the violence, the abuse that that we humans inflict on ourselves and on other people with this. I I hope it. I was going to say never ending, but I do hope it ends. Determination: who's good enough? Who's ugly? Who's desirable? Who's not a good? Who's not desirable? We hurt other people. We destroy societies, we have war and genocide, we destroy ourselves, we destroy families. Someone could tell you that you're attractive. Does that mean that you think you are? No. We sit here all day long and talk about examples of people who um, were paid for supposedly being attractive, being an actor or a model, and yet they abuse themselves or, or, or made bad choices, um, you know, sometimes even hurt themselves with abuse or even sometimes took their own lives. So that's not a guarantee of anything. Intelligence. There's so much. This is, oh, so many other programs on this, right? Um, if someone tells you you're intelligent, do you, does that mean you think you are? No. In fact, one of the most destructive things that I think I witness in, on a daily basis Basis is I'll be out and about in life, and I'll see somebody, and I'll you know say to them, "Hey, what a pretty sweater, right?" And then uh, the person will say to me, "Oh, this old thing. Oh, it's nothing. And oh, there's a hole over here in the sleeve." And they immediately start denigrating whatever they can about themselves. You know what you're supposed to do when you get a compliment? Say thank you. That's it. But there's some people who are such enemies of themselves, they're not even able to accept any compliment about anything. That's so sad. Have you ever known someone who you met them, or before you met them, you might have looked at them and thought, eh, I don't really, they're not what I think super attractive. And then you start spending time with them, and all of a sudden you see them in a different light, right? I remember my freshman year of college, there was an upper class person. So I lived in the dormitory my freshman year of college at university, and so I'm very, you know, I'm like 17, and uh, and it was my first time living on my own, and there was an upper class person, and I think she was a junior. And when I first met her, I thought, uh, oh, she seems nice, but, but I started to spend time with her. And I have to tell you, her personality, her laugh, her energy, her attitude, it was so 
positive and awesome. It's like I started to – it literally almost impacted the way I physically saw her. Like she just became so much – she became so beautiful. <laughs> so like, and the weird thing is, you know, we're young and people are dating, and she had so many pe- uh, people that liked her and were always asking her out on dates. And she was, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I have to turn dates down. I got to study. And and you know, there were other girls in the dorm who would say and talk and would say, well, golly, really? How? What? Because she didn't fit necessarily the 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 stereotypes of that of that school of what the majority population would say is what you should look like. Here's the deal. She had she emanated like so much self assurance, positive, um, good choice, good choices. She was empathetic, she was kind, she was open, she was fun, she was funny. It it just like it literally was transformative. And that happens all the time. And what my argument is this I can't tell you whether or not you're attractive or whether or not I'm attractive or we're we're average or we're below average or we're ugly or we're grotesque. I've had people to my face. I've shared another program. I gave a speech a few years ago. A lady at the end came to tell me that I was ugly and my face was distracting. So I've been told, right? And that's not the only person who's told me how ugly or whatever I am. Um, but again, it's the same thing. If someone tells you you're pretty and you don't believe it, then it's worthless. If someone tells you you're ugly and you don't believe it, it's worthless. The only thing that matters is what I think about me. Now, I do have a lot of work in progress it's about my health and, and, and um, taking better care of my fitness and, and, and eating right and uh, dealing with stress better. That's, that's a serious thing for me. But I'm never going to give up on myself. I'm never going to turn against myself and be an enemy. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm this height. I'm, I'm this frame. I'm this color. I have this nose and this chin and these eyes and this skin and this hair and all of it and it is and for me personally I like it do I like it all the time no I have days where I think oh gosh you know I really need to do a better job of my you know washing my face or whatever or I'm having a bad hair day but the core value of myself I it's not determined by other people it's determined by by how I treat myself and how I see myself. Does the confidence, the self-assuredness, the positivity impact my income? Yes, I actually buy into that part of the start the study. All right, the effects of my self-confidence, the effects of my self-concept on income are stronger than attractiveness, and nearly as strong as intelligence. That's from the sort, one of the sources that's in the show notes. That's powerful. I can't control whether or not somebody else thinks I'm awesome and beautiful and awful and ugly. I've been told all of it. <laughs> um, and sometimes people that tell me that I'm awesome, beautiful, or somebody trying to sell me an outfit at a store, the salesperson. So they tell that to everybody because that's their job, right? Um, and that's okay. I can't control how intelligent people think I am. Some people, and sometimes in my life, I've been told, oh, my goodness, look how intelligent. And other times in my life, I've been called an idiot and been told, you are so you don't belong here, you're too stupid. All right. I'll tell you the one thing I can control, to the best of my knowledge and my understanding of this, is my own self-concept. That I do have some ability. And if some of this research is accurate and it's income, it's my self-concept, my, the effect on income is stronger than that of this attractiveness, subjective issue, and it's nearly as strong as this alleged intelligence issue, I'm going to roll with what I can handle, meaning I can't do anything about this other stuff. Attractive, intelligent, but I can see the impact of my own choices of how I treat myself and my self-concept. That's where I spend my time. That is why I invest so much in being your number one fan. So is it a myth that attractive people make more money than unattractive people? I would say that the research shows that people who think they're attractive make more money than people who think they're unattractive, although they all make less money than people who are thought by everyone else to be intelligent. Yet that intelligence issue is almost equaled by self-concept. So what's the bottom line? If you think you're attractive, great. 
I strongly suggest you should do that because why not be positive? <laughs> and um, I also think that if you think you're intelligent, good. Why not? Again, I sometimes I told a social friend the other day I have the opposite problem. You know, I I have people have sort of body dysmorphia or something where they'll look in the mirror and they they look you know healthy and fine and but like oh my gosh I'm too small or too large and they abuse themselves and hurt themselves, right? food intake. I have the opposite problem. Even when I am in an unhealthy place because I've been um, not eating well, which for me is almost always an emotional stress uh, reaction, um, I'll almost, I'm going to be totally honest, I will look in the mirror and think, oh, I look great. Not great by supermodel standards, but I I won't even see where I probably should see, "Uh uh-oh, you know, you're not eating well, you've lost too much weight, or you've put on too much weight, you know, I've been unhealthy, and your weight shouldn't fluctuate that much. So when it starts to do that, then it's showing you're being unhealthy. I, I'll still look in the mirror and be like, that's good enough, right? It's, it's, I have the sort of almost an opposite problem. I'm like, I, I like me, right? Um, why not? So the answer is you should subjectively decide that you are attractive. You should then go out into the world and have with the confidence and the self-concept based on you believing that you are attractive and I'm going to add also intelligent. And then, yes, will you make more money than people who believe their self-concept is that they're unattractive and not intelligent? Yes. And listen to and access some of the other programs we have on building that self-confident, uh, self-concept and the impact that the lack of, the, of confidence and, 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 and uh, being your own fan has on your life. You can't control any of the rest of the stuff. Whether you're attractive, you're unattractive, whether you used to be attractive, whether you're attractive now, but in the past you weren't. I mean, all of that's silly. You're the only one that makes the decision, so make the decision. Why not? You're fabulous. Uh, you're attractive. You're handsome. You're beautiful. You're good-looking. You know, for men sometimes, oh, I need to get more muscles. Your muscles are fine. Uh, people get so unhealthy, they abuse themselves, right? You are you. That's awesome and attractive. Now, believe that and get out there and work on that self-concept. Assuming that you have defined yourself as attractive, then we're going to go ahead and say it's not a myth that you're going to make more money than people who spend their time criticizing themselves, labeling themselves as unattractive, and wasting time with the negative self-concept. Thank you so much for joining me, and as always, you can come to CourtneyAnderson.com for feedback.